Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Legion 5i from Lenovo. This is kind of a mid-range device in their lineup, and this particular one is powered by Intel, but there's an AMD version available as well. And we're going to take a closer look at this in just a second and see what it can do. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, the price point on this varies quite a bit. It starts at around $800 and goes up from there based on, of course, what components you configure your particular laptop with. Uh, this particular one is about $1,100 as configured. So let's dive into the hardware now. Uh, this one has an i7-10750H processor. That's a 10th generation Intel chip. It has an NVIDIA GTX 1660Ti GPU. And this GPU is very similar in performance to the 2060 from NVIDIA but this doesn't have the RTX features that are on the slightly more expensive 2060 version. So the raw performance is the same, you just get less features on this particular one. Uh, they put eight gigabytes of RAM in here. Uh, this was configured in single channel configuration. It won't impact performance all that much, but you might wanna buy a second module to uh, fill it out and get to 16 and give yourself some dual channel performance in the process there. I believe you can upgrade this to 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, we did take this apart on the extras channel the other day, so you can get a look at the cooling system and everything. Uh, what's also nice about this is that you have an option for a second hard drive. So the one that we've got here came with a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. You can add a second NVMe SSD or a SATA drive, a SATA SSD or spinning disk if you want. So you have a decent amount of storage upgradability on this, which is great. Games are getting larger and larger, so it's nice to see uh, some additional NVMe options available to you on this laptop. Now you've got a lot of different display options on this. Now the one that we have on this one uh, is a 1080p 15 inch display running at 120 hertz. And this is the entry level display it's running at about 250 nits of brightness. All of the displays are IPS. They've got decent viewing angles on them. Things look nice and sharp. Uh, the brightness is adequate to me here at this 250 nit level, but you might want something brighter. Uh, they do have brighter options available. So you can get a 300 nits display, also 1080p running at either 60 hertz or 144 hertz. None of these uh, three displays support G-Sync though. Then they've got the high-end display running at a super bright 500 nits, also 1080p, but it runs at 144 hertz and supports G-Sync. And the pricing on these displays will vary as you uh, look at your different options. Uh, there's also a 17 inch version of this laptop available as well. So you've got a lot to choose from here. And that's why I want to give you a warning here to be very careful when you're out shopping for this because there are so many different configuration choices. Uh, you really want to make sure you go through the list of all the things you want and triple check it before you click on the checkout button because in addition to essentially four different displays in two different sizes, uh, you also have two CPU options. You can go with an AMD or an Intel chip. Uh, you also have at least three GPU choices on this one at the moment, going all the way up to the 2060 RTX GPU from NVIDIA. So just shop carefully uh, because you do have a lot of ways to configure this, which is great, but it's also easy to order the wrong thing. Now the weight on this one is 5.42 pounds or 2.46 kilograms, a little on the heavier side. It's all plastic, but it feels like a really high quality plastic. You've got a nice range to the hinge here on the display. Uh, it just feels nice and solid, and I'm sure the weight adds to that feeling of solidness, if that's a word. Uh, you've got a nice uh, rubberized coating here on the keyboard deck, which makes it feel, again, more premium. Nice big trackpad here. Feels really nice to navigate around with it. Very sensitive. I love the keyboard on this one. Uh, really deep travel on the keys. It's got just a nice tactile feel, and it's got the same keyboard shape and layout that we've seen on other Lenovo laptops, but they have made, I think, the arrow keys bigger uh, than prior editions. Nice big arrows there. 
Uh, you got your number pad here as well. And there are two backlighting options. Uh, so you can have a single color backlight or for a little bit extra money, they've got a zoned RGB keyboard. So you can't set specific key color in the zoned mode, but you can have different colors or have them pulsate or whatever. And you can configure everything through the onboard Vantage utility. Looks pretty good, but I think if you want to save a little bit, go with the single backlight color and you'll be happy with that. Uh, as for ports, we've got a bunch of them. So on the left-hand side here, we've got a USB 3.0 port and a headphone jack there. You can also use Bluetooth, of course, with it if you wish to uh, plug in some headphones. On the other side, you've got another USB 3 port. And then Lenovo is continuing their design where they've got a lot of ports on the back. And then what they do is give you the label for those ports above them. So it's very easy to get a lot of stuff plugged in and keep those cables out of the way. Uh, so on the back here, we've got gigabit ethernet. Uh, this is a USB type C port, but it's not Thunderbolt. Uh, the Thunderbolt port, I believe is on the seven series of these laptops, not the five series. That's one of the things you don't get on the mid-range model. Now the USB-C port does support display output. So you're able to get 4K displays working without too many issues but the USB-C port does not support power in. You've got two more USB 3 ports here, an HDMI output, your power adapter goes in here. It's got one of the Lenovo 240 watt power supplies, but they've made it a little bit smaller this year. Uh, and then you also have a Kensington lock here to prevent your laptop from walking away. And you also have a pretty robust cooling system here too. Uh, the cooling system is not all that loud, um, but you will, of course, hear it, especially when the laptop is under load. Uh, but they do have some new things that they've done uh, with cooling and adjusting fan speeds. So if the fan coming on is going to bother you and you really want some quiet time, you can hit function and Q. And when you do that, you'll get an icon here to indicate that it's gone into quiet mode. And then the power button will change its color from white to blue so you know that the computer is in a lower power mode because when you put it into that quiet mode, it's going to impact performance. So it's good to be able to, at a glance, uh, see what mode the computer is in. And then when you want to go back to your uh, preset setting there, you can hit the function key again to get yourself over to the full power mode that you set. Now, one thing I would suggest you do for the best performance out of the laptop is to load up the Lenovo Vantage software, which is how you can configure a lot of the different features of the laptop. And so what you want to do is click over to thermal mode here. And if you want the best gaming performance, activate performance mode. And that will give you a little bit of a bump over the balance mode here. And then again, when you hit that function cue, you'll be putting the laptop into quiet mode. There's also a setting to automatically enable performance mode when launching games, and that might be the best balance here for uh, getting the best performance out of the laptop. And I really like the fact that the power button always tells you what mode you're in, so you don't have to question whether or not you have the setting where you want it. Uh, so right now we've got performance mode enabled. Uh, just note that that requires the power cord to be attached as we've got it right now. Uh, if we want to go to balance mode here, you can see the power button will turn white. And then if we go over to quiet mode, it'll again turn blue. I just like the fact that you can just see right on the power button what mode you're in. And like many of Lenovo laptops, you've got a manual shutter here at the top for its webcam. So if you want to block the camera, you don't need a piece of tape. You just need to flick that little switch over to block the camera. So overall, a nicely constructed piece of hardware here with plenty of options. Let's take a look now and see how this particular model performs. Uh, we'll begin with Fortnite running at epic settings, 1080p, and we were seeing between 70 and 105 frames per second, all good. Rocket League, 1080p max settings, 150 to 220 frames per second. On GTA 5, we ran it at DirectX 11 highest settings. We were getting between 40 to 65 frames per second. Uh, so that was running pretty nicely at the highest settings. Uh, the Witcher 3, 1080p highest graphics and post-processing settings. We were getting between 55 and 70 frames per second. And then we ran the 2016 version of Doom, 1080p at ultra settings between 70 and 110 frames per second on that game. And remember, we've got the 1660 Ti GPU in here. So depending on your configuration, you may see differing performance 
based on what you put inside of your laptop. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test running in performance mode, we got a score of 5,541. Uh, that puts it pretty much within the margin of error versus last year's Wi-Fi 540. We're just off by about a frame per second on each of these tests. And I think that difference in performance is due to the fact that this is a single channel configuration right now. And we'd probably see almost near identical performance if we had that second channel installed. So I think overall you're going to see the same performance as last year. Uh, but this year's model adds a few more creature comforts that were not on the prior edition. And it's a pretty good entry point for virtual reality. The VR Mark Orange Room test here came in at 6,975. Uh, the 1660 Ti, which again is very similar to the RTX 2060, is a great entry-level GPU for VR. And although you'll get better graphical clarity out of a more powerful desktop uh, GPU like the 2080 or 2080 Ti, uh, you should be able to play most of the VR games out there at a suitable frame rate. And as far as its thermal performance goes, we did pretty well there too. The 3D Mark stress test reveals a score of 98.10%. That is a passing grade, and you can also see the temperature of both the CPU and the GPU here on the chart. And that tells me that the computer will maintain consistent performance when it's under load. And that's important not only for gaming, but for some of the other stuff you might do on one of these gaming laptops. Uh, these things are great for photo editing, for video editing, for live production. Uh, it's amazing, really, what you can do with a laptop these days, especially when you've got a decent GPU on board and having that consistent performance is really important. And overall, I think this is a nice improvement to the mid-range of Lenovo's product line. The performance is gonna be pretty much the same as it was last year, but the keyboard is vastly improved. You have a lot of display options now. There's a ton to choose from on this. And again, you wanna be careful when you go out shopping because you're gonna see a lot of different things thrown at you to choose from. So just choose carefully. But I think overall, you will find a nice laptop here. Now, if you want more stuff like even brighter displays and Thunderbolt and some of the other things that are on some of the more premium devices, that's where you might want to look at the Legion 7. But I think it's nice that the Legion 5 has added some features that were missing in last year's mid-range model. Altogether, it's something I am comfortable recommending, and that's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.